Okay, listen up. I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm going to tell you if those are five hours well spent. Today, we're plumbing the depths of ancient ruins in La Mulana 2. I'll admit, I've never played the original La Mulana. But judging off of how many times the game said, Oh, this is just like in the ruins of La Mulana, it's basically got most of the same mechanics and power-ups and is more of the same. So if you like the first one and are hankering for more, go for it. If the first one turned you off, you're probably not going to find much to redeem the series here. For those like me who weren't paying attention the first time this game came around, La Mulana is basically an Indiana Jones-flavored Metroidvania game that borrows every proper noun known to Norse mythology. You fill the shoes of Lumiza Kozugi, daughter of the first game's protagonist, who's been called in because the neighboring Eglana ruins have suddenly become a hotbed of monster activity. And from there, the plot is basically just a word salad of terms lifted from Norse myth wrapped up in a sci-fi alien story to give you an excuse for some good old platforming and whipping action with some puzzles on the side. And said platforming and whipping is quite good. Exploring each map is a treat, in large part because La Mulana offers a surprising amount of variety in its dungeons. There's almost always something new around the corner. Almost every room introduces a new problem for you to contend with, be it a new enemy type you have to learn or a trap that you have to tread carefully around. Those traps in particular are a welcome and interesting addition to the Metroidvania formula. Drawing on the whole Indiana Jones side of its theming, La Mulana 2's dungeons have the occasional traps waiting for you to haplessly stumble into them. From fake floors that open up and deposit you two levels down, to lightning traps that attack you if you touch anything valuable, they always keep you on your toes. Enemy variety is also surprisingly nuanced and varied. Most enemies are one-hit pushovers, but they all have unique traits that make you approach them differently. Carbuncles, for example, are dangerous down long hallways where you can't jump over their projectiles, requiring you to either wait until you can attack them from behind, or forcing you to use some of your precious shurikens. And when every area in the game has a half dozen different enemies it can mix and match with traps and different layouts, it means that every room has varied and interesting encounter design. The moment-to-moment -moment exploration is where La Mulana 2 is strongest. But how about the bosses? La Mulanas can be a bit on the simple side, but still fun. While they might have multiple attacks that will kill you once or twice, they'll always use them in the exact same 15 to 30 second rotation on repeat, so they'll never surprise you or catch you off guard. Just refer to Exhibit A on screen. Once you learn the dance, it's just a matter of keeping in step long enough for the boss's health to deplete. But falling into that rhythm and enjoying the sensation of having gotten the boss down pat is entertaining in its own way, and I had fun chewing through these guys. However, while La Mulana 2's got that good old game juice flowing, it's not as tightly designed as it could be at some points. Namely, the game does a poor job of explaining some of its mechanics, sometimes explaining exactly what you can do with an item hours before you'll ever get it, while at other times just shrugging and telling you to figure it out yourself. But I'm not sure the game is tightly designed enough to get away with such a hands-off approach. In one outrageous case, I even had to solve a puzzle that required me to use a mechanic that was never explained until a later puzzle that I couldn't reach without having solved the first one. What happened was that there was this puzzle with a treasure chest, containing a critical item you need to progress, blocked by a breakable wall. You can normally just walk up to the wall and break it with your whip, but there's a trap that makes the ceiling crush you so you can't get to it. The solution is to throw shurikens at the wall, which breaks it and reveals a path around the trap. It doesn't make any real-world logical sense, but once you figure it out, it does make a sort of game sense. The wall breaks after taking damage, and shurikens deal damage, therefore shurikens can break walls. And, you know, if this was just a straight instance of me not divining what the devs wanted me to do, this would be a non-complaint. But the kicker was that 20 minutes later, locked away behind a door that required the first puzzle's reward to get through, I came across a simpler puzzle with an identical solution. And... There was both a hint tablet and a tutorial message that flat out told me that maybe I should throw a shuriken at a distant object to break it. Dev logic not translating across to the player is one thing, but having a concept's tutorial after it's already been applied in a larger puzzle is just baffling game design. And stuff like this is what I mean when I say that this game just needed to be designed a bit more tightly. While that was the most egregious example, it wasn't the only time the game led me astray and caused me to throw my hands up in frustration and ask, how the heck was I supposed to figure that out? 
One thing I have figured out, however, is my verdict. Yes, I, I know, I'm a master of comedy and transitions. Anyway, let's get to it. I can't really say that you can get a full experience in La Mulana 2 in 5 hours, as I don't think I'm even a third of the way through this game yet, and I've spent almost as much time scratching my head and running aimlessly in circles as I have meaningfully playing the game. Getting lost once or twice is to be expected in a Metroidvania, but La Mulana 2 produces that feeling even more than its peers. However, the game is overall quite fun, and I would keep playing it. And if you're interested in playing it too, just bear in mind that this one will run longer than what I usually look for on this channel, and you'll probably want to descend into Eglana with a walkthrough in hand, just in case. But despite my frustrations with La Mulana 2, I spent more time having fun than not, and the excellent moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is what keeps me interested and coming back for more. Hey, do you believe that your time is the most valuable thing you have? Do you want to find more games that respect that time? This channel is all about finding games that don't pad themselves and can be completed in a reasonable amount of time. So if that sounds appealing to you, then consider hitting that subscribe button. But regardless, thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.